Happy Easter Sunday. Welcome to Park Church. My name is Pastor Andrew. This is Pastor Nicole. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Uh, today, Pastor Andrew is going to be encouraging us through the word, uh, telling the story of how Jesus um, not only died, but he resurrected today. And there's a celebration to be had with that. And that through that, we have hope. And that no matter where you're at in your life, that he's brought hope, that we can have a relationship with him again, and that he can bring um, hope, hope into our hopelessness. So we're excited to hear about that. We're also going to be continuing our stories of God's faithfulness. Uh, we're going to talk to Jen York and talk to her how, how God walked her through um, a really difficult season with cancer, brought her out on the other end, has healed her body. And so um, she has an awesome, encouraging word for you today. And also we're going to talk to Warren and Michelle Barsana, and they're going to share with us how God walked with them through um, a season in their marriage that was really difficult and how God was faithful to them. And um, we hope that you leave this time today feeling encouraged that no matter where you're at in your life, that God is faithful and he Amen. is for you and he is with you. Amen. If you'd like to give today to Park Church, you can give online at parkchurchsd.org. Um, just click the giving link. Uh, it'll give you directions. If you don't like to give online, you can also write a check. Uh, our, our, our address and other information uh, for that is also on that same giving page online. Um, and we know that this is a really interesting Easter Sunday. Normally, everyone's getting dressed up and they're getting ready to meet with friends and family. Um, for us, you know, we would be gathering with our family to eat and to have Easter egg hunts and do things. And we know that that isn't something that we are able to do um, today. So we want to encourage you to not only remember um, the fun things that you have done as a family in the past, but we want to encourage you to create new traditions. What are some things that you can do to day to make it special with your family? What are some things that you can do with your kids and extended family? Maybe that's you call your family on um, FaceTime or Zoom and you do an egg hunt together or you um, sit and um, eat dessert together or dinner together over um, your phone. I know that it's um, not in person and it doesn't take the place, but let's have fun with it. Let's find ways of integrating together. If you um, are alone today, I want to encourage you, reach out. Find somebody who else, maybe someone else who's alone, and you know that they're not able to be with somebody um, that they love today. Um, reach out, and if you are a family, think about the people in your life who need a friend today, who need to be encouraged, and give them a call. Um, drive by their house and honk your horn with a sign. Um, whatever it is that you want to do to not only make it special for your family, but to remember the other people that are around us who need encouragement today, who need to have their spirits lifted, and need to see a familiar face. Well, we're so excited to get in the Word today. We know that God uses the Word to begin to speak to our life and speak to our heart and uh, change us and cause us to look more like Him. And so Andrew's prepared a message today that's going to encourage us and offer us hope. And so um, why don't you share that with us and how um, God wants to bring hope to us today on Resurrection Day. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming out on Easter Sunday. Um, today, we are going to just simply tell the story of Resurrection Day and see where that takes us. If you have your Bibles or if you have your devices, you can turn to Luke chapter 24. We're going to be reading and kind of uh, talking about it as we work through the passage. Verse 1 through verse 12 says this, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, I, I just want to, I, I think this is like a lot of us. We uh, find, we go looking for something specific. And when we get there, we don't find what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. That we're seeking a truth, we're seeking to, to fill that part in our body, or in our, in our heart, that this void, mm -hmm. to fill it, and, and we just don't find it. And we look, and we look all sorts of places. We look to, to fill it with lifestyle, we look to fill it with a mm -hmm. good time, we look to fill it with, uh, with whatever it is, you fill in the blank, and, and we find that we're wanting mm -hmm. at the end of it. And here, these women showed up to the tomb. Their hopes are high to see 
and, and to care for the one they love for Jesus. And they went there and it was empty. Mm-hmm. I think that speaks to a lot of us. It says, and when they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Now, I think this is also significant that, that as they in, encountered these, these, these people in dazzling clothes, these two men, that he says, you're looking in the wrong place. You don't look for the living among the dead. That this tomb was a place where you lie dead bodies. That, that I think a lot of times we do the same thing. We go looking in all the places that we talked about. And, and you know, even I'd add, we add religion to that. We can add, a, you know, we seek religion to kind of bring value to our life. But Jesus didn't come to bring religion. Jesus came to bring life. And if, and if our faith doesn't produce life, then, then I, I think we might be off a little bit. That there's something more to this pursuit of faith in Jesus that maybe we haven't encountered yet. Let's keep reading. It says, Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And they returned from the tomb they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. They had an experience that day. Mm-hmm. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Listen to this. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. Mm-hmm. But Peter, mm-hmm. I love that. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloth by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Mm. You know, Jesus says in John 10, 10, he says, I have come to bring life and life abundantly. That that he didn't come to bring a stale version of religion. He didn't come to bring uh, an institution programs that mm-hmm. that help us uh, with our families those are all great those are all products of the community and those are wonderful things but Jesus Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly John 3:16 says mm-hmm. for God so loved the world that he gave his only son his only begotten son that whoever believe in him mm-hmm. shall have everlasting everlasting life and and that's the rally that's the offering that is what was happening right here that this was the day that, mm-hmm. that this was accomplished. It was resurrection day. Now, in my reading, I, I observed that there's three people here, three different responses um, from people here on resurrection morning. And I want to talk about that a little bit. The first one was, mm-hmm. was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the women that mm-hmm. were with them. They were telling a story. They were telling about this experience they had. They went to the tomb seeking one thing, but realized and and, and got a deeper understanding. They remembered what Jesus said. And and, and it was almost their perspective changed. Their sorrows turned to joy. They realized that they weren't just, they weren't just going to the wrong place, but, but they needed to seek Jesus because he was alive, that you don't find the living in the dead places. And that this 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 teaching, this this how Jesus told them in Galilee, this is this is what is gonna happen, so that they could recall that moment and be encouraged in their heart. So they had this experience with with, with two men in shining apparel that, that were telling them, why in the world are you looking here? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? You know, I know in my story it's the reality is, is, uh, is Jesus is still speaking to us today. That they had to remember Jesus' words and they were called and they were encouraged. And, and I think even today, um, his people, like when I, when I made a decision for Jesus, when I came to faith, there was this moment where I felt this 
pulling on my heart. And, and I believe it was Jesus saying, come to me. And, and, and I had to respond to that. That even today, that he's doing that to you and I. So maybe it's a recognizing this morning and not a remembering that that, that as, as your heart might be pulsated, maybe there is something to this Jesus. You know, maybe your mom has made you sit on the couch and watch us broadcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're hearing this and you're like, you know, maybe there's something to that. I've tried everything else. Yeah. I've tried to fill that place with so many things and maybe there's something to that. So the first group is this group that had this experience they were here telling this tale to some. And the second group, it, it says it was, it was as they told these things to the apostles of all people, they told these things to the apostles, but these words seemed to them as an idle tale. Mm -hmm. And they did not believe them. These are the men that, that were following Jesus for three years. And it was an idle tale. How many of us are like that? Yeah. You know, it makes me think of... Uh, Thomas in the book of John, they call him Doubting Thomas. And hmm. he says, I, I won't believe unless I put my hands in, in his wounds. And then, you know, you, well, you can read about it, how Jesus actually came and saw Thomas and said, hey, Thomas, come, stick your fingers in my wrist. And how about stick your finger in my, my rib? And, and, and there was this beautiful moment. And then Jesus says, blessed is he who believes and does not see. Mm -hmm. There's this place. And, and a lot of us can fall in that. We can all be skeptics at times. And the third group we see, we see Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter says this verse 12. It says, but Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. And he saw the linen cloth by themselves. And he went home marveling at what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we're... We're usually one of these three things. We had an experience and we just keep telling the story of, of how God touched our life. Of, you can't believe it. And, and there's always that group of people that's listening and goes, man, that's, that's a tall tale. <laughs> that's, that's an idle story. I don't know if I can grab that. I don't know if I can believe that. I, I need a little bit more than just that mm -hmm. to believe. And then there's that third group, like Peter who ran to the tomb. But when you understand the context of what's happening in Peter's life, days before this, Jesus told Peter, he says, this is before he was taken and, and beaten and hung on the cross. He says, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter's like, I will never deny you. And it happened. Imagine the shame. Imagine the weight, the burden of the reality of Peter's decisions of his actions that were on, on him in that moment as he was just sitting in the reality of his sin, of him rejecting Jesus publicly after he followed him for three years. I mean, imagine what that would have felt like for him as he's sitting here. And now he hears this story of these women who, who go and they experience the, these, uh, these men in dazzling clothes, the angels that... And we're saying you're seeking the living among the dead. Remember what Jesus said. And as Jesus, as, as Peter heard this, he, I'm sure he was compelled. He's like, oh my gosh, I got to see this for myself. Yeah. There's so much I need to talk to him about. There's so much that I need to make right. Yeah. And he ran to the tomb and he, and he looked in and he saw it and then he went away marveling. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful to see later in the gospel how, Peter, uh, how Jesus and Peter mm -hmm. reconnected, how Je Jesus was so gracious yeah. to Peter and restored him. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So today, I think the message is remember. Or maybe even for some of us, is recognize what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. That no matter what any of these people encountered, whether you're the person with the encounter, whether you're the person that's sitting here as a skeptic, as the doubter, or maybe you're the one that had the burden and you need to go make it right. And you responded. No matter which, whichever one you're in, any of those perspectives will not determine the reality of what happened that day. John 16, 33 says this. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. 
Mm. What's encouraging about that is no matter if you were the person with the experience, no matter if you were the person that was doubting or you were the person that was responding, all those things aren't speaking to the reality of what's happening. That's, that's our response and our perspective to what is happening. The reality is, is this is the moment that he overcame the world. This is the moment where he reconciled humanity back to the Father. This is the moment where he conquered sin and death for all of us. Mm. And we need to recognize it. We need to respond to that message. So today, I want us to take this Easter Sunday, whether you've been going and following the Lord your whole life, or this is brand new to you, or maybe you're the skeptic and going, I've never believed in any of this stuff. Hmm. I want you to listen to what's happening right here. And, and if Jesus is pulling on you today, I want you to respond as we continue talking about how God has been faithful to a lot of people throughout history. Well, you know, what's amazing is that each of those people um, were in probably the darkest days of their life where the one they had given their life to follow and had given everything for and expecting him to um, appear in a certain way and do a certain thing as the Savior, um, to come and exercise his authority um, within their current day, ended up um, dying for them and achieving a much larger goal of um, cleansing their hearts, cleansing all of our hearts so that we can have relationship with the Father again. Um, but in that moment of despair, uh, God brought hope that when they looked for the dark moment and really went into the tomb, that they came out with life and um, came out realizing that Jesus had a much bigger plan and he has a much bigger plan for you. That your hopelessness, the seasons of life that have brought hopelessness into your life, the dark times um, actually can be turned around and he can use those things to bring glory, not just to himself, but even change your life. And so um, we're going to head into a time where we're going to be talking to a few people about their stories of God's faithfulness. How did Jesus show up in their life, transform their life? And, and it wasn't easy but he walked him through the valleys, through the dark times, and brought them out on the other end stronger and um, joyful. And so why don't we welcome Jen York as she shares her story, and we'll bring her on. All right, Jen, I am so glad um, we could sit down and have a little conversation and just sharing stories of God's faithfulness. And you are someone that came to our mind when we were thinking about this because um, you just so naturally tell of God's faithfulness in this season of your life. And so would you just share with us a little bit about your journey with cancer and how God walked you through it and um, really was faithful to you in that season? Yeah, so it was the summer of um, 2017, and it was my first day of my new job. And I had to leave early because I had my very first maternity appointment with Tyler, who's two now. And so in that appointment, a lump was discovered. Yeah. So I had a biopsy and it turned out to be a benign fiber adenoma. So I waited until after Tyler was born to have surgery. But I, you know, I went back to work early. And so I ended up having surgery about six months after Tyler was born and that, um, so it was the summer of 2018 and from May to July, when I had the surgery, um, the tumor had doubled in size from 0.5 to seven inches. So it grew very rapidly. I didn't have any idea that it had grown that big. So after I woke up from surgery, um, they informed me that that was not benign, that it was certainly, you know, cancer, they would test for it. And so the following week, I was delivered the news that it was um, a highly malignant cancer. And I was terrified. So um, I just, I fell to my knees and I prayed and I said, please, God, um, I pray that this has not spread throughout my body. I was, I was scared. And I just said, you know, I, 
I've already dedicated my life to you, but I dedicate my life to you and I just, I pray. And so luckily the CT scan was clear. It had not spread, but I was then prescribed a very aggressive chemotherapy and involved Mm -hmm. five day hospital stays, hooked up to a port in the hospital every 21 days for six to 11 cycles. And there was no double, no double blind studies and they didn't know if it would help me or not, but it was just a very aggressive form of cancer. I'm young with children and they wanted me to try something. And so this was a huge decision for me to make because I, um, you know, it may or may not work. It could have reduced my immune system and maybe made the cancer, you know, increase the chances of it coming back. Um, I, you know, I could have organ, permanent organ damage, leukemia. Um, it was such a big decision. So I, you know, my doctor reached out to eight sarcoma experts across the country and asked about my case. And it came back 50, 50, it came back for yes, for no. Wow. So all yeah. weekend I prayed and just prayed about what to do. And at the end of the weekend, I clearly heard a voice that said, mm-hmm. um, you don't have enough information to make this decision yet. And so ultimately Mm -hmm. for the next almost year of my life, I was sent on a journey um, to see a variety of doctors across the country. And almost a year um, later, I finally arrived upon an amazing treatment plan if it's needed in the future. And so essentially there was like 40 pages of testing done And all those results were compared with 4.5 million different treatment combinations and a personalized cancer therapy was developed, um, targeted specifically. Um, and so, you know, I also saw a variety of doctors at UCSD, all kinds of integrative medicine, nutrition, um, mindfulness. And I just went on this incredible journey and, you know, it's been, um, almost a couple of years and I'm healthy and the yeah. whole time I felt guided by God. And so yeah. it's just this incredible journey that I, you know, that I was sent on and, um, I feel like God's sh- shown me so much and I have so much to share. And so, um, yeah, I'm very, very thankful. Yes. And Jen, it's just, you know, we've, we've kind of been touching in through this whole journey for you and your family. And I know that it's been incredibly scary at some points. And um, at the same time, there's been this peace over you and a peace over your family that you guys have navigated through these um, tricky situations with big question marks at the end. And God's just been so faithful to you guys and even bringing you through with peace. And I think that's such a testimony of God's goodness in the midst of difficulty that he proves himself so faithful. And I love seeing that in you and on you and the joy that you've had through this season. And so it's such a beautiful thing to watch that you can have together such difficult circumstances and yet such beauty that comes out of it. And you and Jeremy have blossomed as a family through this process. And so thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, We're also going to bring on uh, Michelle and Warren, and they're going to share a little bit about their family and um, kind of the journey that they've been on. So we're going to bring them on as well. And um, But thanks so much for coming on and encouraging everybody with your story of just one moment of God's faithfulness for you guys. And we just appreciate you. So welcome, uh, Warren Michelle. I'm so glad that you're joining us today in the conversation. Uh, so Warren and Michelle have a story they want to tell of how God brought hope into a hopeless situation in their marriage. And uh, I'm so excited. I don't think yeah. I've even heard the, the full story. I've heard bits and pieces. Um, but I'm excited to hear just, just what God actually did in and through you guys. Yeah, not, not many people have heard the full story. Just we were, I think we were just trying to cover, you know, each other, get, let that, that love kind of cover the whole situation. Um, 
Well, I, I don't I don't think we want to go into like the details of what led up to it, but we in October we decided to separate and Warren moved out of the house and we were, you know, meeting with our pastoral leadership at that time and um, you know, going into counseling, figuring things out, and it was it was a long process of of uh yeah, just fig- figuring out what we needed to do in our marriage, what we need to do, needed to do personally as well. Um, did you want to say what you went through? <laughs> it was probably less easy for him than it was for me. Uh, the the awakening reality for for my part, um, when God basically um, uh, point the finger at me. The very, very first, first thing that God, you know, says, you need to repent. Mm-hmm. And that was the very first thing I ever heard from God, plain and clear. Uh, you want your marriage to be restored? It begins with true repentance of your heart. Mm-hmm. And without that, you know, I mean, just like anything else, you could pay uh, a marriage seminar $700 a weekend or uh, a sister or brother in the Lord with a simple advice if there's no true repentance, none of those will work. Yeah. So um, it began with first repentance. That was one step. The rest is basically God says, we'll work it out. Mm-hmm. But I need for you to repent first and foremost. So that's where that one step started. And that's all it takes. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's the beginning. Um, the reality in the situation of, of where we where we were at was uh, working out that one step. One step is that yeah, you repent, and now it takes months and months and months, sometimes years of work. You know, we're into what's April now. We're into the sixth month of of uh, of this, but the the steps leading up to it of of uh, hope in a hopeless situation. Um. I was completely without hope, 100% without hope that our marriage would be restored. I was starting to gather information on uh, not just passing legal separation, but going right to the big D. And um, it was, it was heart wrenching and breaking. And it was the worst, worst decisions in that I could ever even start to work out in my brain. Um, just because of that working it out process, it's it's difficult when it's involving human beings. And uh, it was in January um, that I was speaking to uh, some people, uh, just asking for advice on um, what it could look like of uh, ending marriage. And um, God's that's when God started speaking to you and really changing. Uh, changing the thinking we didn't even talk for like nothing nothing personal we didn't talk anything about us we talked only about the kids and what the kids needed and then we had one night where we just laid it all out on the table and he just poured his heart out and said exactly what he was going through and exactly what his intentions were and and it was uh I had two I had two things that I asked God for and they were like my last resort. Uh, I, I just said, you know what, God, I need to, I need to hear two things from him. I need him to admit a certain thing and I need him to see his own value and, and start speaking about his own value is when you're, when you value yourself when you consider yourself worth worthy of love and, and having a healthy relationship, you begin to treat other people around you differently. And in that night, he mentioned it back to back, those two things. And they were so like, they're just, they're not typical conversation where this is what we're going to start talking about. And he mentioned it back to back. Um, and I knew, I was like, okay, this is, this is when I knew that we could start restoring this. And that's when God started shifting my heart. I was, I went from hopeless going into this, <coughs> into this meeting with zero hope planning for the end. And 
in one night. It just, it switched. I woke up and I was just like, wow. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> like, yeah. All of the, mm. all the things I needed were there. It was back, like, phew, just back, like a miracle. So you take a miracle like that. It's while it is a one step thing where it's like, we're, you know, God shifted something, uh, walking out the responsibility of that miracle is another story. And that's something that we get to do every day yeah. for the rest of our lives. Well, I think what's amazing, Michelle, is that when we're in a place where we don't know how to fix it, it feels like it's just in pieces and we don't see any way for it to be resolved that um, that's when God comes in. You know, that's when he does the work. That's when he can flip the switch in our hearts. That's when he can heal. And when he can put a seed of hope back into the ground of our marriages, back into our families and say, what looks to be completely irreparable with him and with his presence, um, when we invite him into that process, that he can bring hope back in. And and we're, we really appreciate you guys, um, your vulnerability your willingness to share what God did in your life, because it's going to give so many people hope because so many people sit in the same place that you guys were sitting in and, you know, have a testimony to say, it may not be an easy road, but it's possible and that he can walk us through it. And so we really appreciate you guys taking the time uh, to share and to encourage that everybody who's listening. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for allowing it. In that process, uh, you know, it's for a creative, your creative, you know, Jesus, for me, I kind of shut down. I like I was not writing. I was I, I wasn't leading worship during that time. But earlier last year, I had written a song called um, You Are Always Good. And it's it's very simple, you know, very few lyrics, but it just every single time. Sometimes I'll write songs and it'll, I, I don't own them yet. And after I wrote that song, I immediately owned it. And it became sort of the thing I woke up with every morning. Mm. Uh, every, still to this day, I'll, w- I'll wake up singing it. And it's, it's just something that, yeah, it's something that I live by now. Because it has, it has nothing to do with what I can do to earn any kind of goodness, to earn any kind of acceptance or any kind of extra love or whatever. It's, it's just completely about, you know, professing his goodness through every situation because he is, he's always good. He's always releasing his goodness, his kindness, his mercy is chasing us. Mm -hmm. It's overtaking us. And we have that promise. We are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. No question. I know you guys took some time this week and you prepared a, a recording of that song. So why don't we take some time and just worship together as Warren and Michelle actually uh, play that for us this Easter Sunday and, uh, and get blessed. All right, here it is.
thank you so much for joining us today, this Easter Sunday. Um, we hope that the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart this morning, encouraging you that there is no um, pit too deep. There is no place that's too dark or too far away from God for Him to come in and restore and bring hope. Um, so wherever you find yourself, whether you feel like you have too much, too much shame, I've done too much for God to accept me, or you have a desperate situation ahead of you, or even just the season of isolation is putting you into some depression and despair, we want to encourage you that wherever you're at, Jesus died for you, and he didn't just die, but he rose again, and today we celebrate that, and he wants to bring life to you. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ this morning, um, would you message us, either um, if you're on Facebook, personal message us, or you can email us if you just need prayer this morning or you just need encouragement, um, do the same. We would love to connect with you this morning. So we hope you have a great day. Um, after this, we will be joining a Zoom call. So if you want to hop on and see some faces and uh, celebrate Easter for a few moments together, um, you can click the link below and we would love to have you and would love to see your face. All right. God bless. All right. Have a great day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.